Hello, today we are going to be talking about the chordae tendinia and also papillary muscles. So let's go ahead and get started. And once again, you are going to draw your round circle. But today, I want you to draw the bottom to be somewhat bigger than the top because we're going to be dealing mostly with the bottom. Okay, I'm going to draw, there's my interatrial wall and there's my interventricular wall, right? Now, if you remember when we were in class, we were talking and we said right here, you have your, I'm going to move this over just a little bit, makes it easier for me to write, your tricuspid valve. Okay, we also called this the um, AV valve or atrioventricular valve. Okay, and then on the left-hand side between the right atrium and the right ventricle, we had our mitral valve. And I don't know if I called it that, and this might actually have an eye right there. All right, but um, it's also known as the bicuspid valve. I know I did call it that. And it's also known as the left um, um, AV valve or um, atrial ventricular valve. Now, here's the whole thing. When blood pumps from the atrium into the ventricles, these valves basically open up. So I'm going to make it look like a little trap door here. And they're going to open up and then blood is allowed to flow through. Then what happens is when the ventricles contract, we need to pump from the right ventricle, we need to pump it out to the lungs, and from the left ventricle, we need to pump it out to the body. So what we can't have is blood going back into the right and left atrium. So what we do, or what happens is, what your heart does is when the, when the bottom contracts, these valves will actually close. And that will keep blood from going back up into here, back up into the atrium. So how does it keep those from closing? Well, I'm going to erase this real quick. And the way it's going to keep these closing is by something called, or I'm sorry, it's going to keep them from going backwards, right? So to make sure they close, because we need to have a nice even close. We don't want these to also go back too far this way, which I'm going to talk about in a minute and that's called prolapsing, okay? So what you have is you actually have some cords called tende, uh, chordae tendinia, okay? And they're like parachute cords, as I remember that's the way it was described to me. And they're like elastic cords, so it's, they're called chordae Oops, I'm sorry. Make this an ant. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Chordae tendinia. Okay? And so what these do is they keep valves from going into the atria, okay? And what this will do is it will prevent blood from going into the atria. So that way the blood's going to go out either to the body, remember, because from the, from the left side we want to go out to the body, from the right side we want to go to the lungs. So these are going to keep the valves from going backwards. Now, the chordae tendinia are attached to thin muscles called papillary muscles. Okay. 
And basically, these hold on to the chordae tendinia. So now, now, like I mentioned, what will happen is if these chordae tendinae become stretched out, or if sometimes people are just born with it, the um, valves will actually go back. So instead of blood going to where they're supposed to go, like out to the body, through the aorta, or out to the lungs, through the pulmonary artery from the right ventricle, these will open up a little bit and then blood, let me get my red marker here, blood will actually go up into here on accident. And when it does, it makes a little sound and that sounds called a heart murmur. Okay, so basically a heart murmur is when your valves don't close properly and blood goes back the wrong way. And it's, they're pretty common. Um, and sometimes they're not, most of the time they're not harmful. But anyway, so there's a picture of everything that we have. So make sure you have all these notes, and that's it.